Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Lord God. The day you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more about you. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us understanding, Lord God, not just understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. The title of today's lesson is, It's Evil to Live Backwards. It's evil to live backwards. And you know when you spell backwards, when you, when you spell live backwards, it, uh, it spells evil. And God says in order for us to keep the commandments, that allows us to live. But if you're not keeping the commandments, then you're what? Living backwards by living an evil life. So what we're going to do is break that down, like I said, during, during the lesson. But as we always do, I'm going to go ahead and read Psalms 119, 165 to 176. Psalms 119, 165. Psalms 119, 165 to 176. It says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies and loved them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry, let, let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplications come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue, he said, my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments of righteousness. Let thine hand help me for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live and it shall praise thee and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So, right, so, like I said, dealing with the lesson. Remember, it's evil to live backwards. And when you spell live backwards, it, it means evil. And God told us to keep the commandments and live. But if you are living backwards, that means that you're living evil, not according to the way God called us to live. So, we're going to start this off in Psalms 34. Psalms 34, 11 through 22. Psalms 34. 11 through 22. Psalms 34, 11 through 22. And when you get there, go ahead. Come, come ye children, hearken unto me. Uh -huh. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Uh -huh. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Right. In order, in order like I said, so he's saying, so what man that had desired life and loveth many days, that he may see good? And the only way you can do that is by keeping the commandments. But go ahead. Keep thy tongue from evil. Keep my what? Keep thy tongue from doing what? From evil. Uh-huh. And thy lips from speaking God. Or deceit. Mm-hmm. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Yes. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. Mm -hmm. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Mm -hmm. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Mm -hmm. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Yes. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, mm -hmm. and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Yes. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. Amen. That's true. Right. So we just tell you. So it says, What what man is he that desire life and love many days that he may see good? Those that keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. So now let's go ahead and go to Psalms five. Psalms five, we're gonna read one through eight. Psalms 5, 1 through 8. Psalms 5, 1 through 8. Psalms 5, 1 through 8. Go ahead. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Mm -hmm. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto, for unto thee will I pray. Mm -hmm. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. Mm -hmm. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Right. Neither shall, shall evil dwell in mm -hmm. with thee. Right. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Well, you, well, you, I know I'm pretty sure y'all heard that say, you know, God, God doesn't hate the sinner. 
he only hates the sin. You know, like, you know, that, that's one of the cliches that they love to use. But he said, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. He didn't say that he just hated the sin. Who are the workers? That's the sinner. <laughs> exactly. Well, go ahead. Verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. That means lies. Mm -hmm. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Mm -hmm. But as for me, I will come unto thy house in the multitude of thy mercy. Yes. And in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Mm -hmm. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Verse 11 and 12. 11 and 12. But let those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Yes. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Mm -hmm. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Yes. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With yes. favor wilt thou compass him with the shield. Amen. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go to uh, Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6, 12 through 19. 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 When you get there, go ahead. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a frower mouth. Mm -hmm. He winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. Right. He teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. And remember, frowardness means perverseness. You're being perverse. But go ahead. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Mm -hmm. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Mm -hmm. A proud look, yes. a lying tongue, mm -hmm. and hands that shed innocent blood, right. and heart that devise of wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, mm -hmm. a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brother. Amen, amen. So all those things are were considered evil, evil, right? So now, let's go ahead and go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, 1 through 10. 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 When you get there, go ahead. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. Right. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Right, and we're bold as a lion. Why? Because we're standing in the in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Go ahead. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. Mm -hmm. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Right. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. Mm. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, uh. but such as keep the law contend with them. Right, so that's why I said, so, th so they that forsake the law, they praise the wicked. He said, but such as keep the law contend with them, because why? That's why, that's what we're doing right now. Like I said, that's why we contend with the wicked by using the word of God, letting them know that their lifestyle is evil against God. So that's why we contend with them to let them know they need to repent from their lifestyle so that they can come into the knowledge of the Lord. Verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment. Right. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Right. So God gives us understanding. That's why he says here in, um, in uh, Psalms uh, 111 and 10, Psalms 111 and 10 says, he says, Psalms 111 and 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. So that's why when the ones that keep the commandments of God, God's Holy Spirit allows us to give us understanding so that we can teach his people. But if a person who's not keeping the law and such commandments of God, how can they teach anyone when God's Spirit is not even going to show you what's right? That's why some people can say that God died on Friday and rose on early Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's no way in the world you can get three days and three nights from Friday evening to early Sunday morning. Like, because why? Because they're not keeping the commandments of God. But when you're keeping the commandments of God, then that's when this Holy Spirit will reveal his truth unto you. But go ahead. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness mm -hmm. than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Right. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. Is a what? A wise son. Is a wise son because he says this in Deuteronomy chapter 4. What are we?
wisdom was. Our wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Start at verse. Verse. Um, verse 2. Where it says. You shall not add unto the word which I commanded you. Neither shall you diminish off from it. That you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Which I command you. And then he says this right here in verse 6. No verse 5. Behold I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. That you should do so in the land. Whether you should go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. But what happened though? Our people don't want to keep the commandments of God. That's why we're considered a stiff-necked people. Because but remember though, that's a blessing that God came down, spoke to our ancestors out of the Mount Sinai, and yet they hear all of that and still don't want to keep the commandments, man. But go ahead. But he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Mm -hmm. He that by usury and unjust gain increases his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Right, because the Bible says, you can also read in the law where it says that when we, um, when, when an Israelite loans money to another Israelite, you're not supposed to get put usury. That means interest behind it. So if, someone, if, so if you give someone $20, they say, let me hold $20 until next week. You won't say, look, I'm giving you 20, but next week, give me back 25. No, you give back what, you, what, you, what you've given. Yeah, go ahead. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Mm, read that one more time. He that turneth his ear away from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Mm. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. Mm -hmm. But the upright shall have good things. In possession. Amen. 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 So now let's go ahead and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, one verse, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Because I know I, I, I've heard some people, real, like I said, I'm going to go there, but I know like in Luke chapter 8, Luke 8, and I think it's 21. Luke 8 and 21. No, or is it? Let me see. It might be Luke 9 and 31. I think it's Luke 9 and 31. Let me see. Because he just said the same thing that we just read. What is that? Well, just go there. Let's go. Let's go. But I think it's, yeah. Luke 8 and 21. Go ahead. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation also, make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Right. Read it one more time, one more time. Read it one more time. There have no temptation taken you, mm -hmm. but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, yeah. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Yes. But will will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen, amen. So he's just telling you, so like, so every time, so anytime we come through temptation as far as trying to sin, God will make sure that he'll always make it a way of escape so that we don't have to fall into this, uh, that temptation. And we're going to read the same thing also in James 1, 12 through 16, because some people believe that God tempts people to sin, and he doesn't. Some people believe that God tempts people to sin, but he doesn't. Tempt people 
to do evil. He will never do that, as we just read right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22 and 23. Go ahead. We used to do what? Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, yeah, you know, you just study harder, you know, things like that. That's okay. I was trying to find, that's why I was looking earlier. I was trying to find that where God said he doesn't hear the um the prayers of sinner. I found this in John 9, 31. John 9, 31. Cause so he said the same thing in Proverbs 28 and 9. He says the same thing in John 9, 31. It says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So like I said, so in the Old Testament, you see that. God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners, and also in the New Testament, God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. He wants us to repent, turn from our evil ways, and live according to his word, and that means the commandments, but yeah. So now, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 22 through 24, 1 Thessalonians 5, 22 through 24, all right, go ahead. Abstain from all appearance of evil. From what? All appearance from every kind of evil. Uh, evil. Go ahead. And the very good, uh, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Uh -huh. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless yes. unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who also will do it. It will also, will what? It will do it. So not only is he faithful, he called him, we're also going to do it. But look what he says in verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body by preserve blameless. So he wants us to be blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's, let's go there. Let's go to um, 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. 13 and 14. Because see, Peter going to say the same thing about being blameless. 2 Peter 3, 13 and 14. 2 Peter chapter 3, 13 and 14. 2 Peter chapter 3, 13 and 14. Can we get there? Go ahead. Nevertheless, we, according to the, his promise, look for new heavens and new earth. Yes. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. It's going to draw what in there? It's gonna, righteousness. It's going to draw righteousness when he comes with that. But look, though, look, look, look what we have to do in order to uh, obtain that so we can be in that new heaven and new earth. What does it say? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, yes. be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Yes. Without spot and blameless. And without spot and blameless. So how is it that we'll be able to be found without spot and blameless at the coming of the Lord. We're going to see an example by John the Baptist's parents. Let's go to Luke 1, 5, 6. Luke 1, we're going to read Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Can we get there? All right, go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the yeah. king of Judea, uh -huh. a certain priest named Zacharias right. of the course of Abia, uh -huh. and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Yes. And they were both righteous before God, uh -oh. walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Uh-oh. He says that they were both what? Righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, and they were what? Blameless, exactly. Did, did, did it say that they were sinless? It didn't say that they were sinless, but it said that they were blameless and righteous according to God. Because remember when you can read in Proverbs 24, 16, where it says, For a just man will fall seven times, but still get back up. And the just man means a righteous man. But it said, but when the wicked fall, they fall into mischief. It means all, type, all types of evil because they're going to continue to keep doing evil. That's why when I... When I um, when I was showing, I was showing this one brother about this. When I was showing this one brother about this in Romans chapter seven, because he was saying how he was constantly struggling with sin. And I was like, "Well, look, Romans chapter seven. I'm gonna start at verse twenty-one. Romans seven and twenty-one. Romans seven and twenty-one. 
It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That means dealing with his spirit. He said, but I see another law in my members, which is flesh, warring against the law of my mind. So he's saying, okay, I see a, another law that's warring with me in my mind. Because if he's in the flesh, that's the law of sin and death. But when he's walking in the spirit or his inward man, that means he's keeping the law. Look what he says. He says, uh, I'm going to read to verse 23. But I see another law in my members warned against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, flesh. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, with the spirit, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Very next chapter, Romans 8, 1, 1 and 2, look what he says. There, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So they're not walking after the flesh, trying to be a sinful man. They're trying to walk in the spirit, by trying to keep the commandments of God. And look what Jesus said. Well, look what Paul said about Jesus, what he freed us from. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus, who has made me free from the law of sin and death. And the law of sin and death that's the penalty of the law. So remember, so that's why I said the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ. So that even though that a lot of us struggle with, you know, certain, certain areas in our life that, you know, that the law of sin and death is constantly trying to conquer us. Yet, as long as we continue to keep staying on that narrow path and, and still trying to walk in the commandments of God, even though when we stumble, remember, there's no condemnation that just because if we happen to sin while we're walking while we're in the Lord, while we're in Christ, don't think that you're going to go to hell just because you sinned. You got some people think that, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. Look, he, he, messed, he messed up. He did this. He did that. Well, brother, we all slip up and fall sometimes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you constantly stay down. You get back up. You ask the Lord to strengthen you, whatever area that you have problems in, so that if you have a problem with maybe, you know, uh, pornography, fornication, or whatever it is, lying, stealing, ask the Lord to constantly keep strengthening you so that you no longer do those things. But there's no condemnation, though, that even though if you happen, not, I'm not saying to say you, you're doing it every single day over and over again. Like, no, we're talking about ones out here who are actually trying to walk in the spirit by keeping the laws of God. And when they slip up and fall, God, you know, he, he forgives us of our sins and he puts us back on a narrow path. Go ahead, Abigail. Um, okay, so I just So remember, so we read in Luke 1, 5 and 6, he said that they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments of the Lord, blameless. So how are we righteous before God? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 24 and 25. 24 and 25. Yeah, because I know, because I had to point that out, man, because I, I talked to quite a few people who constantly say, man, but I'm constantly, you know, uh, sinning all the time and this and that. It's like, man, I just feel like God don't love me anymore because I'm constantly, I said, listen. Walk in the spirit, keep the commandments of God, ask the Lord to strengthen you. But when you do slip up and fall, don't act like God going to throw you to the fire. He said, no, he's not going to do that because he loves you. Like, I mean, there is no condemnation when you are in Christ Jesus. He says, when you're walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. So if you're constantly trying to ask the Lord to strengthen you in those areas, just keep doing it. Like I said, like I said remember, it's a, it's a, it's a, a long and arduous process. Like I said, we won't, we won't come to that fulfillment until we're in our spiritual bodies. This is why Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, Verse 18, that's why I tell people that. Second, um, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18, where Peter says this. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So see, so we're constantly growing in grace as we're walking in this walking in this new life. Like I said, walking in this truth, we are. We're growing in grace. And that's what that's the thing about it. But we don't want to be like, you know what, hey, man, hey, you, you break one commandment, you broke them all, so hey, why, you know what I'm saying, why, 
what's the point of me trying to keep the commandments because God know I can't keep them anyway. Nah, but people have that, and those are the ones out there who try to promote lawlessness and try to tell folks, just, just believe in God, you'll be all right. All that trying to keep the commandments, all that, he nailed those to the cross. Like, that's when you got to watch out for false teachers like that. But now, okay, where are we? Uh, Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 6, 24 through 25. How are we righteous before God? Go ahead. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for yes. our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. He might preserve us what? Alive, alive, right, so that we can live. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these. No, no, just some of them. All these. No, 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 no. As long as we do like nine of the commandments, forget the Sabbath, forget the feast day, forget the dietary law, forget all the cleanliness law, we ain't got to do any of that. No, they don't say that? All. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All these commandments uh -huh. before the Lord our God as he hath commanded. Amen, amen, amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Psalms 23. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. One of the most famous and popular songs right here. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Can we get there? Go ahead. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yes. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name. He leadeth me in the path of what? Of righteousness? Of righteousness. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. Right. For thou art with me. Yes. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yes. Thou anointest my head with oil. Mm -hmm. My cup runneth over. Yes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 So now, let's go ahead and go to Psalm, uh, Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15, 24 through 33. Proverbs 15, 24 through 33. Proverbs 15, 24 through 33. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to talk about Proverbs 15. 24 and 23. All right, when you get there, go ahead. The way of life is above to the wise. Yes. That he may depart from hell beneath. Yes. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, mm -hmm. but he will establish the border of the widow. Yes. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, uh -huh. but the words of the pure are pleasant words. Right. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, mm -hmm. but he that hateth gifts shall live. Mm. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, right. but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Mm. The Lord is far from the wicked, Yes. but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. You see how you all keep saying how you hear the prayers of the righteous, but not of the wicked? Go ahead. Is a widow a, a, a man with a No, wife? no. A, well, yeah, widow could be um, a widow word. Uh, yeah, no, well, that's a widow word was, was a man uh, who lost his wife, and then a widow is a wife who lost her husband. But go ahead. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. Yes. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Yes. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, mm -hmm. but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Amen, amen. Because, you know, you got something like, you know, when you read Proverbs chapter 1, where it talks about uh, Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. But look at, look at verse 5, though. Proverbs 1 and 5 says, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. You got some people trying to say, look, look, I've been in this scripture, I've been in this Bible for 30, 40 years. You can't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they'll have an attitude, whereas they can't learn anything. Like I said, in God, you have to have a humble and a contrite heart and spirit, whereas, you know what? Even though you may have been teaching that all your life, if someone's coming to you bringing the word of God, open up your eyes, just like how he's done to us. Like, we, we, we thought one way 
all our lives. But now that we're you know, going line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and understanding how God said, look, watch out for this so-called Roman Christianity who's coming as, you know, as being manipulative and deceptive, pretending like they love the Lord, but actually teaching doctrines of men. Praise God, our eyes are open to, uh, compared to that while this whole world is drunk of Roman Christianity. But now let's go and go to uh, Psalms 1. Psalms 1, 1 through 6. That's why he says, narrow is the gate to the kingdom, but broad is the road to destruction. I'm telling you. That's why he says, when he says on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out devils in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do wonderful works in your name? He's going to say, depart from me, for I know you not. Workers of iniquity. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So that's, that's, that's going to be a scary time. But uh, Psalms 1, Psalms 1, 1 through 6. Psalms 1, 1 through 6. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Right. So so you shouldn't be getting your wisdom and understanding of folks who are ungodly. Right? You should be getting folks in your understanding because what, what does our wisdom come from? From the Lord and come keeping his commandments. So therefore, you should seek wise counsel and advice for those out there who are keeping the commandments, not those who are in this world. Go ahead. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, yes. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Yes. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Didn't Paul say he also delighted in the law of the Lord? So he's, he's delighting in the law too? Go ahead. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yes. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Yes. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yes. The ungodly are not so. Mm -mm but are like the shaft, which the wind driveth away. Mm. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So it says, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So who are the righteous? Those are the ones that believe in God and what? Keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And who are the sinners? The ones who break the law. <laughs> Go ahead. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Yes. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Amen. So now let's go and go, like, we're going to skip 16. Let's go now to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 8. Ecclesiastes 8, 10 through 13. Ecclesiastes 8, 10 through 13. Ecclesiastes 8. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. Eight, yeah, because I, I know the Apocrypha has a thing called Ecclesiasticus. Yeah, the Apocrypha, or Sirach. But yeah, but uh, Ecclesiastes 8, 10 through 13. Go ahead. And so I saw the wicked buried. Yes. Who had come and gone from the place of the holy. Yes. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. Yes. This is also vanity. That means it's meaningless. That means it's worthless. But now watch this. Go ahead. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed. Uh -huh. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though it's so you see that, though? That's why he said, look, he says, because sentence or judgment against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil because they feel like, look, shoot, I mean, I'm lying, I'm sinning, I'm prospering, I'm doing all this. Well, obviously, you know what I'm saying, nothing wrong with me living this kind of lifestyle. Trust me, it's going to come up on judgment day. But just because you're doing these things right now, don't mean that's not going to come back on you. But go ahead, verse 12. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, uh -huh. and, is, and his days be prolonged, right. yet surely I know that it shall be well with him, that with them that fear God, which fear before him. Mm -hmm. But it shall not be well with the wicked, mm -hmm. neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Because he feared not before God. Right. So just because a wicked man right here, you know, who's who's a sinner living a lifestyle, they live to be 70, 80 years old. They still wicked old men and women, one like that. Yeah, they might be living now, but just imagine when that when 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 the new Jerusalem comes down, you're gonna have that lake of fire. They like they gonna be a part of that second death, while the ones who are that's why it says right here, he said verse 12, though a sinner do evil a hundred times in his days. Be prolonged, yet surely I know that it is it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. So it's gonna be well with us because we understand that what we have a reward coming, and that's what the new Jerusalem being the kingdom of God. They don't have a reward coming. Like I said, they're gonna get thrown into that lake of fire, and be whatever that is in the lake of fire. But um 
So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 19. 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 As a matter of fact, just read 11 through 20. Yeah. Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 20. All right. When you get there, go ahead. For this commandment, which uh -huh. I command thee this day, it is not hidden from, the, from thee, mm -hmm. neither is it far off. Right. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven mm -hmm. and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Right. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Yes. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do that it. That thou may what? Do it or just hear it? Do it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> See, I have set before thee this day life and good uh -huh. and death and evil. Yes. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. Yes. To walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. Yes. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Yes. But if thine heart turn away, uh -oh. so that thou wilt not hear, mm -hmm. but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Yes. I call heaven and earth to record this day mm. against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and thy seed may live. May what? May, may live. live. Right, because he don't want us to be living backwards, doing evil, mm -hmm. right? He wants us to live by keeping his commandments, but go ahead. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Yes. And the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Last, well, yeah, two more, but still the same on number 16. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. One verse. What the book say? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according yes. to that he have done, mm -hmm. whether it be good or bad. Right. Whether it be good or bad. We're going to read right now. It's going to say whether it be good or evil. We're going to read the same, pretty much the same thing. Last one. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. 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 And when you get there, go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yes. Fear God and keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. For this is the whole duty of man. Yes. For God shall bring every work into judgment uh -huh. with every secret thing. Yes. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm. So, like I said, so everything's going to be done. But what is the whole duty of man? Fear He's, God. Fear, fear, his fear God and to keep his commandments. Exactly. So that's why we're here. So we're, we're here. That's why I said, that's, that's why the lesson says it's evil to live backward because God wants us to what? Fear him and keep his commandments so that we can live. But if you want to live evil, <laughs> then that means that you're going to get thrown into that lake of fire at, at the second death, which you can read in uh, Revelation 21 and 8 and also Revelation 20, 11 through 15. So I pray you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>